Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. You're watching Turner Classic Movies, where we're in the midst of a lineup of classic horror movies. Tonight's films are touched with some degree of black magic, like our last picture tonight, Curse of the Demon with Dana Andrews from 1957. There's also a cultish undercurrent to the film we have next, from RKO in 1943, The Seventh Victim. The movie marks the film debut of Kim Hunter as an orphan attending a Catholic boarding school. Her tuition is being paid by her older sister, but that sister is missing. The bill is due, so Hunter goes to New York to try to find her. The movie you're about to see, which sets a disturbing and bleak tone, that's a compliment, bears little resemblance to the original idea. Initially, the plot was set to revolve around the search for an orphan in Los Angeles, an effort to keep the missing orphan from becoming the seventh victim of the title. But producer Val Luton changed the setting to Greenwich Village and sprinkled a dose of Satanism into the picture, with a final script from Charles O'Neill and DeWitt Bodine. Bodine introduced many of the New York elements into the story, incorporating his personal experiences. He had come across a genuine Satanic society in New York when he was working as a playwright. A number of other New York haunts show up in the story, including an Italian restaurant, Dante's, based on Barbetta, a restaurant in the theater district. The seventh victim came from Val Luton's unit at RKO. Luton produced a series of efficient, atmospheric horror films in the 1940s, including Cat People and I Walked with a Zombie, both of those films directed by Jacques Turner. From The Seventh Victim, or for The Seventh Victim, I should say, Luton brought on Mark Robeson, making his directorial debut after working as an editor on a couple of Luton productions, as well as an assistant editor on Citizen Kane and The Magnificent Ambersons, the first two pictures directed by Orson Welles. Robeson went on to have a varied career as a director, including Humphrey Bogart's last movie, The Harder They Fall, plus Peyton Place, Valley of the Dolls, Von Ryan's Express with Frank Sinatra, and his penultimate movie, Earthquake, from 1974 with Charlton Heston and Ava Gardner. This is his first directing effort. From 1943, also starring Tom Conway, Gene Brooks, and Isabel Jewell, the seventh victim. Years after the release of the seventh victim, Val E. Luton, the son of producer Val Luton, argued that edits made by director Mark Robeson undermined the final version of the film. He thought eliminating key scenes undermined the story. Luton also maintained that the ending needed to hold on the last shot longer to allow the bleakness to truly set in for the audience. Ultimately, The Seventh Victim wasn't quite as successful in the U.S. as other Val Luton productions. A South Carolina theater owner cleverly noted that we must have been the eighth victim. However, contemporary critics and horror fans have elevated the movie to a celebrated place in the Val Luton canon. The shower sequence, particularly chilling, is frequently cited as a precursor to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Up next, more Black Magic, this time starring one of horror's signature leading men, Christopher Lee. 